Namaste and welcome to Doc for Fitness. We are continuing our series of talks on geriatric topics. So today we'll talk about exercises for bedridden people. We'll talk about why it is important for them also to exercise and also demonstrate some exercises uh, for bedridden people. People can be bedridden for various reasons. Some of the reasons for being bedridden can just be temporary and they may get back to their original um, health status for the most part or it may end up being a long-term or a permanent thing, um, ultimately um, leading to their death or fatality. So it's important for them also to exercise and we'll explain why. Some of the causes for being bedridden may be a major bone fracture, such as a hip or a trochantric or a femur fracture, sometimes multiple fractures because of an accident or trauma, any major stroke until they recover, end-stage dementia, dementia for any reason, end-stage Parkinson's disease. They may have a spinal cord injury where they can either have both of their legs paralyzed or sometimes both legs and both arms paralyzed. This can either happen because of an accident to the spinal cord or can also happen because of um, a tumor or cancer, something like that in the spinal cord. Severe brain injury, again, generally happens from an accident but can also happen with any major bleeding in the brain as well. Uh, prolonged ICU stay for any reason or even prolonged hospitalization for the very, very elderly people can make them bedridden also. So obvious reason is when people become very frail because of old age, they right before, you know, a, a few months, a few years before they die, there's a general decline and they may become bedridden as well. So why do these people also need to exercise? So first of all, it improves mobility and their functional status. So um, that needs to be maintained also. And functional status can be improved with exercise. Can also improve their activities of daily living by doing simple exercises. That means their ability to feed themselves, brush their hair, brush their teeth, toileting, wearing their clothes, things like that. Also reduces the risk of blood clots what doctors call a DVT or a pulmonary embolism. So blood clots usually generate in the lower extremities, in the calf or the upper thigh region, and then they migrate up to the lung. It can also sometimes really happen in the upper extremities as well. It uh, exercises for bedridden people also helps uh, decrease risk of bed sores. Um, it also helps decrease risk of pneumonia because sometimes when they're always lying down in bed, the lower part of the lungs are not getting uh, enough air. So um, they end up getting pneumonia and they're very prone to infection. It improves their bladder and bowel function. So the risk of having incontinence, constipation, all that improves. It maintains bone health. Uh, it also decreases pain because when people are bedridden, they have a lot of stiffness in the muscle, they have joint stiffness, so it helps all that. Definitely helps with mood. It also elevates their, um, it also improves their confidence level. Um, so many times bedridden people are quite depressed. So uh, improved mood is definitely a benefit of exercise. So now I would like to demonstrate these exercises. So we will demonstrate these exercises for you. Here I have a patient lying comfortably on a bed. So we'll start with upper extremity exercises first. The first exercise, um, we will start with flexion where you will lift your arms above by your head. If you're unable to do both arms together, you can do one at a time. Try to reach out as far back as you can. Each exercise will be shown five times here. So each exercise you will do five to ten repetitions and the entire set needs to be done again at the end of it. And then the two sets need to be repeated two to three times a day. The next exercise will be an abduction. You will just stretch your arms by the side. Again, you can do one arm at a time if you are unable to do both together. So 
next exercise we will do is a biceps exercise just fold it and bring it down gently we're doing five repetitions next exercise we will do a triceps exercise for that your elbows should not move elbows should be stationary so the elbows are locked in position Next exercise will hold our arms by our ear, by our shoulders and pull our arms down. So next exercise will try to reach over to the side. We'll do this one at a time. Start with the left side. This will help the patient reach over to the side, switch off the light, get their medicines, get a cup of water. So all these are functional movements. Same thing after this will be repeated on the other arm. Next, we will do a shoulder rotation. So in this, your elbow should be by your waist and should not move. Keep it close to your waist, hug it by your waist. You can also open your palms this way. Okay. So... After this, the next exercise, we'll try to do a partial sit-up. It's very important for a bedridden patient to try sitting up. So brace your shoulders like this across the chest. Try to lift up. If possible, hold it for three to five seconds and come down. So after this, we'll move to lower extremity exercises for a bed-bound patient. So first, we're just flexing and extending our feet. Try to pull it. You should feel it in your calf muscles. Again, five repetitions and the entire exercise will be repeated two times, two sets per session. So the next exercise will just gently draw, extend one leg. You don't have to lift it off the bed. Just try to make a circular movement and extend it and open it. Sorry. Same thing, the repeating on the other side. Having a firm mattress will help these exercises a little better. But you don't have to change the mattress just for that, of course. So the next exercise, <clears throat> uh, one leg at a time. We will draw the leg towards you.
Again, all these are very functional movements. This will help a patient dress and undress. Can be done both sides at a time too. Right side. So the next exercise, we'll try to do a straight leg raising test, a straight leg raising exercise. This may not be possible for all patients. Try to keep your knees straight and lift one leg at a time. If possible, you can hold it for three to five seconds. It all depends on the condition of the patient. So the next exercise, we'll do a rotational exercise. Gently bend both your legs and try to open up. Open and close. So the next exercise will be a pelvic tilt exercise. It's hard to see it in the video, but basically you will try to draw in your lower abdominal muscles and at the same time you will try to push your back lower back down to the down on the bed and then relax. So you can also do this by holding your hands by the small of your waist and you can feel the curve of the lower back obliterated when you do this. So do this five times. Pelvic muscles become very, very weak leading to incontinence and all that. So pelvic exercises will also help the patient. Today is bridge position. It's very important, especially for um, helping people wear their diapers, wear their underpants, pants, etc may not be possible for everybody to do it just gently bring your legs towards you keep your knees bent and lift your lower abdomen back up if possible hold it to a count of three to five if you're not able to do that just bring it up and gently bring it down Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching our video and do not forget to hit the like button, subscribe and share with your family and friends.